good afternoon. Welcome to Gospel Light Baptist Church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon. Let's take your hymn book. Turn to hymn number 333 as we all stand together. Hymn 333, The Lily of the Valley. Hymn 333. I have found a friend in Jesus. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Thank God for the lily of the valley. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Welcome back to the afternoon portion of the service. I hope that you were able to be with us this morning for the 11 a.m. service. It was tremendous. I had told you um, in regards to Dr. Barber when he comes and he begins to speak, and he just begins to quote the word of God. Isn't it a wonderful thing to be able to hide the word of God in our hearts so we may not sin against him? We're, that's what we're directed to do. Take the Bible, read the Bible, memorize the Bible, and not only show, so we can share it with others, so it would be a blessing to, under our, to our own selves. And so I love to hear this man preach, and um, he'll be preaching here again in just a moment. But I want to thank you for coming back into the afternoon service to all those who had a hand in the tremendous meal. Oh, my goodness. It was so good. Um, by the time I got kind of down to the end of the line, my plate was full and didn't have any more room for anything else. And, um, and then I was somebody, I won't name names, but somebody got on to me for getting my dessert late, that I got things out of order, that I supposed to got, had my dessert already on my little plate sitting in front of me, that I ate my meal as my mother had taught me to do, eat your meal, Finish your plate before you get dessert. I mean, what, weren't we all raised like that? Mm -hmm. No, not, not this generation. They're going to get their pies and their desserts first and eat that first before they eat their vegetables and their meats and things like that. And I don't know what this world's coming to, Dr. Barber. Whenever you just when you get your meal out of line like that, it just isn't right with God. And, um, and so I get up after I enjoyed my meal, enjoyed talking to the barbers, and I get up to go get dessert, and all the spatulas are gone. And, and, I'm, and I was thinking, you know, this, this, this is wrong. It's wrong, Brother Tony. <laughs> that they, <laughs> well, it, it, it wasn't far from that. And then I asked for a spatula, and, and there, you know, the kitchen was clean. Everything was already put away, and and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get my dessert or not, but um, they had pity on me and instructed me that I need to get up a little bit sooner, get to the dessert table a little bit quicker next week while all the utensils are out. And so I will work on that. Ma'am, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so I got my chocolate cake um, that I will enjoy here um, this afternoon. 
So with all that silliness to the side, thank you for being here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we're looking forward uh, to the remainder of this service. Let's pray. Hey, Father, Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for your goodness, and it has been a great day. We thank you from the Sunday school hour on that old, the old hymns were sung, that praise and worship up to your holy name uh, was offered, and then we opened up the word of God, uh, the true word of God, and we've had the Sunday school teaching, we've had the preaching this morning, and we're looking forward to more, uh, to more of that this afternoon. And Lord, I pray that the Spirit of God would come down, speak to our hearts as only you can, and Father, I pray that, we'd, uh, that we would feel that power that uh, Dr. Barber spoke of this morning, that we would experience it in our lives and in, and in the days in which we live. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Number 285 as we stand together. Hymn number 285, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Amen. arms. The answer is nothing. Amen. Let's turn over to hymn number 75. Hymn 75 for our last uh, hymn this afternoon. Hymn 75, sweet by and by. Hymn 75, sweet by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day. Amen. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it upon.
Brother Barber, I believe you're up. We're looking forward to it. Thank you for being with us today. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. For he hath not dealt with us according to our, iniquity, our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath it removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. For well, these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my servants and upon my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into blood, into darkness, and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up the everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up the everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. I'm so glad we have a king. One day he's going to reign upon this earth, and I'll get into that here in a little bit. But I'm so glad that you're here this afternoon. It's a wonderful thing to be in God's house on a Sunday afternoon when most people are watching television or sleeping or doing both. You know, you can do both at the same time. We all know that. But it's so good to have you, and I'm so glad for the royal family. God bless you, Tony and Melissa and Audrey and Caleb. I got you, son. <laughs> so I know your name. I know what you're doing. <laughs> I'll tell, my, tell your parents only if you misbehave over there, okay? No, Joe's kid. Those are some of the nicest kids that I know. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful people and so much talent in the parents. Isn't that wonderful? God is so good. 
Well, I'm glad you're here. And again, I've used enough runway. Let's get airborne. What do you say? Open your Bible. Did I tell you when we open the Bible, the Bible opens the mind of God? Let's see what God's thinking about today in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. And as you're finding your place there in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, Paul writes to his young son in the ministry, Timothy, and gives him a description that we all need to pay attention to that I'll read in just a moment from the third chapter. But it's good to have a Bible. Hold your Bible up if you've got your Bible with you today. Isn't it wonderful to have Bibles? Yeah. Wonderful. You know, there have been 70 million martyrs since the days of Jesus, and most of them have been because of people who had faith that this is the Word of God. Don't ever take it for granted. Every time you open it, remember, somebody paid a price for you to have a Bible. They preserved it. They translated it. They brought it into, to us in our own language. Don't forget that. What a price has been paid for us to have the Word of God. I'm going to read from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, and through verse 5, after we pray. Would you pray with me, please? Our Father, we are grateful today for thy blessed word. We thank you for the price that's been paid for those who are willing to give their lives to, to bring it to us in the language that we speak and that we can understand, that we read. May we hide it in our hearts that we may not sin against thee. May it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. May we say with the psalmist, Oh, how sweet are thy words to my taste, yea, sweeter than honey. To my mouth, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Help us to get the understanding, the picture, the broader picture of what's happening in our world today and those things that are soon coming to pass because we believe that Jesus is coming soon. In his name we pray and with thanksgiving. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 3. Verse 1, this know also that in the last days, take a second and underscore those two words, last days. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if there's ever a time that we needed to know what's happening in our world and the next great event that's going to happen, we, today is the day. I mean, tomorrow's not here. Yesterday's gone. But today, this know also in the last days, that's where we are, there'll be difficult times. We're living, I'm convinced, in the last days prior to the return of our Lord. I believe, according to the scriptures, that the next great event on God's timetable is the rapture of the church. These days that we are living in, Paul describes as perilous days, meaning difficult, harsh, trying days, savage days, restless and unsettled days. The world conditions say to us that something climactic is about to happen, and we believe that is the coming of Christ. Now remember, we talk a lot about the Antichrist, and I'm going to be talking about him here, but we're not looking for the Antichrist. We're looking for the Christ of God. We know that our Savior is going to return. Listen to the description that Jesus gives about the days prior to his return. It's found in Matthew chapter 24, 
verse 5 and through verse 7. Please listen carefully. Jesus said, I'm quoting him now, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. These are words that describe what's happening right before our eyes today. Nation rising against nation. What's happening in Eastern Europe, the Russians are rising against the Ukraine. We know that all of the, and by the way, Jesus spoke of wars and rumors of wars. As I speak, there are no less than 41 wars going on somewhere in the world. Rumors of wars. Jesus knew what he was talking about, didn't he? I mean, as God, he knew everything. He looked down into the future, as it were, to see and to tell us in his own day, from his own lips, what it would be like prior to the days of his return. World conditions are unsettled today. There's the rise and the reestablishment of the old Soviet Union countries. Putin will not stop in Ukraine. He will reach out to the other countries that once made up the old Soviet Union. That's what he wants. He wants to be another Stalin. And I'm convinced today that what we're seeing is, is pointing to that. I remember when I was a boy, that's been a long time, but growing up in my dad's church, he would have Dr. M.F. Ham, the revivalist of my old Kentucky home, to, to conduct revivals. And Dr. Ham was like a prophet. I'll never forget, he had the little white mustache. He had the glasses that don't fit around your ear, they just hang on your nose. And every time I looked at him, I thought, man, that, he's a prophet of God. You know, I was just a little kid. That's a prophet. And the two things he always preached about. One was the rise of Russia, and the other was the second coming of Christ. Now, Russia is rising, let's face it, and Jesus is coming. I sign all of my correspondence with this statement. Keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. I'm convinced that we're in the last days, and Jesus is coming soon. I've entitled this message simply, The Second Coming of Christ. Now, we need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that our Lord's return will be in two phases. Phase one is the rapture. That's when Jesus comes for his saints. Phase two is the revelation. That's when Jesus comes with his saints. Again, Jesus gives us another word about how ready we ought to be from Matthew 24 and verse 44. Listen to what Jesus said. I'm quoting him. Therefore, he said, be ye also ready, for is in an hour that you think not the Son of Man cometh. That's one reason but I think Jesus is coming soon because people are not thinking about it. People are thinking about next Friday and payday and vacation and what they're going to eat next week or where they're going to work or what they're going to do. The world out there has no concept. But thank God we have an insight because we have the Word of God and we study the Word of God and we read the Word of God and we delve into the Word of God to see these things. So we're going to talk about the two phases. We've talked first, of course, about phase one, the rapture. Now the question rises, how do we know that Jesus Christ is coming again? Well, many books have been written about the second coming of Christ. Some of them are not worth reading. Some are really good, and they stay right with the scripture. But the, we want to look into the book, the book of all books. Within this ample volume lies a mystery of mysteries, happiest they of human race, to whom their God hath given grace to read, to fear, to hope, to pray, to lift the latch, to force the way, 
but better had they never been born that read to doubt or read to scorn. Someone wrote, I entered the world's greatest library doors. I crossed the acres of their polished floors. I searched and searched their stacks and nooks and settled at last for the book of books. We searched the world for truth. We call the good, the true, the beautiful, from graven stone and written scroll and all old flower fields of the soul. But weary seekers of the best, we come home laden from our quest to find that all the sages said is in the books, in the book that our mothers read. I'm so glad for Bible reading mothers. I know my, my biological mother died when I was two years old and she was only 29 left behind six kids. But her prayer was, I used to call my daddy into the bedroom at night and I'd say, Daddy, something's going on down here. He said, Son, let me tell you what's going on. God is answering your mother's dying prayer. She prayed, Dear God, please call my sons into the ministry. And humanly speaking, I'm here today because I had a, a mother that prayed. And God answered her prayer. And she's looking down, I believe, from heaven. I believe she'd be kind of pleased with her son, don't you? <laughs> if I may say so. I know in my dad's ministry, over a hundred young men surrendered to the ministry, four of whom were his own sons. He helped to establish 50 independent Baptist churches. Started a radio program the year I was born, 1932, and it went until 2018, I believe it was. And he preached on the radio for 30 years. My brother preached on it for 57 years, daily broadcast. So we thank God that the gospel has been a part of our family. I read just uh, not long ago that in the Library of Congress, there are 39 million books, but not one of them can match this book. This is God's book. God wrote it with his own finger, as it were. Thank God for the Bible. It tells me who I am. Thank God for the Bible. It tells me where I'm bound. Thank God for the Bible that makes the way so plain. Thank God for the Bible that exalts the Savior's name. Keep looking up, folks. Jesus is coming soon. How do we know it? Well, he said he was coming. John 14, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, inasmuch as I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Someone said, well, where is heaven? Well, if Jesus is there, it's good enough for me wherever it is, and we're going to be with him. So... From the lips of the Savior. And then the angel said he was coming, Acts chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, watch it now, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which you see taken away from you into heaven, will come so like, will come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. Well, it's just about time out for a shout, isn't it? Yeah. Listen, folks, Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said he was coming, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. Paul said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not as others which have no hope, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, 
that we which are alive and remain in the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, things are happening right before our eyes, ladies and gentlemen, that are setting the stage for the Antichrist to take over the, re the reins of government and rule the world. But I've got some good news for you. He will not take over until we have been taken up in the rapture. He's phase one, remember, is coming for his saints. Paul put in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 10 these words. And, so, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Notice his past tense, the wording, delivered, already delivered us from what's coming. And the, the things that are coming, the wrath is, a, is the reign of the Antichrist. We are living in what is called the church age or the dispensation of grace. And it runs from the cross to the rapture. Already 2,000 years have elapsed since the age of grace started, the dispensation of grace. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8, we have Peter's concept of God's calendar. And he tells us in that verse that one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. You know what that means? One day, a thousand years, a thousand years, one day. That means Jesus only been gone home for two days. And some exciting things happened on the third day. Keep that in mind. Jesus is coming soon. Now, during this period of the dispensation of grace or the church age, God is calling out of the Gentile nations a people for his own name. One of the most pivotal verses in the New Testament, don't forget this, is Acts 13 and verse 46. And here's how it reads. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of god should be should have first have been should first have been spoken to you that is to you jews to the nation of israel to the jew first remember then the gentile seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life lo we turn to the gentiles so during this age God is calling out of the Gentile nations a people for his own name. God's clock, it's interesting to note, stopped, as it were, for Israel when they rejected Jesus as their Messiah. I'm talking about now as a nation. Does that mean that individual Jews are not being saved in this age? doesn't mean that at all, because they are being saved. But as a nation, the program that God has for Israel will not begin again until after the rapture when the Antichrist takes over and the people of Israel, the nation, will be refined to go over into the kingdom age. I'll read for something for you in just a few minutes that help you understand that more. On May the 14th, 1948, something outstanding and wonderful happened. Israel was recognized as an independent, sovereign state. Dr. J. Frank Norris Consult of the Truman, President Roosevelt and, Roos and, and Truman as well, consulted Dr. Norris, we have letters to this effect, about the Jewish question. Is it the thing to do to recognize the Jews, Israel, as a sovereign state? And Dr. Norris, in a letter to Harry Truman, President of the United States, outlined biblically why Israel should become a sovereign and independent state. And on May the 14th, 1948, they were declared an independent sovereign state. And by the way, the first nation to recognize them 
as an independent sovereign state with the United States of America. Things are happening, ladies and gentlemen. President Trump moved the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and declared Jerusalem as the eternal capital of Israel. There's no dispute. It's not Tel Aviv. It's Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city. Keep your eyes on the news that talks about Jerusalem and read your Bible about it as well. Now, the rapture will take place when the period known as the fullness, now watch this, the fullness of the Gentiles comes to an end. In other words, when the last Gentile believer is saved, this, the rapture will then take place. Paul wrote in Romans 11:25, blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, that is, be fulfilled. In other words, in the last, God's calling, remember, out of uh, the Gentile nations, a people for his name, when the last Gentile has, has been saved, the rapture will take place. Now, after the rapture comes the tribulation. That's a period of seven years during which time the Antichrist will rule the world. It is known also as Daniel's 70th week. 69 weeks are already passed. And there's a long and huge gap between the 69th and the 70th years. And it's already lasted 2,000 years. So we don't know how much longer it's going to last, but I don't think it's going to last much longer. Because keep looking up, folks. Jesus is coming soon. Now, this period of seven years, the tribulation period, Daniel's 70th week, at the beginning of that week, although that week of years, seven years, the Antichrist will make a covenant with Israel, permitting them to go right along with their worship, their temple worship, and all that they're accustomed to. But in the middle of that seven-year period, the Antichrist will break that covenant and turn on Israel, and God takes over to spare Israel from being destroyed completely. It's known also as the time of Jacob's trouble. And you'll know Jacob is Israel. The, the time of Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7. This is one of the most important verses in the Old Testament. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be delivered out of it. They will go into the tribulation period, the great nation of Israel, to be refined, to get them ready to go into the kingdom age, which is that second phase, and that begins. We're going into it right at this moment. The phase two, the Lord's return, called commonly the revelation. He's coming with his saints. He's already come for them. We've been in heaven for this seven-year period while the tribulation is going on at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Pass the peanut butter, please, and the graham crackers. Ginger snaps all goes along together. By the way, nobody goes to heaven that doesn't eat peanut butter. <laughs> Goodbye, honey. Several kids have asked me, is that really true? Are you just kidding? I said, well, I'm just talking. That's preacher, <laughs> preacher talk. Makes a good interlude. But uh, if you want proof, it's in the book of First Babylonians, chapter 1 and verse 1. Unless thou dost eat peanut butter, thou shalt in no wise enter the kingdom of God. <laughs> the revelation. That's when he comes in majestic glory with all the powers of heaven behind him. And we're going to see two things that he will accomplish. But get first Revelation 19, beginning at verse 11, where John wrote, I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon it is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness doth he judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire. Upon his head were many crowns. And they had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed in a vesture, dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven, 
That's where we'll be. We better learn how to ride a horse. And the, the uh, armies in heaven follow him on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And we know that upon his vesture, that outer garment, and upon his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's coming as King. He came the first time with a cross. He'll come in the Revelation with a crown. He'll be crowned Lord of Lords, King of Kings. That's your Savior and mine. What a wonderful Savior. Keep looking up. He's coming soon. Now, when he comes for this revelation, when Israel has gone in a period of refinement through the tribulation period, and it's not only designed for Israel but for all unbelievers, but Israel is in the midst of it, being refined, ready to be taken over into the kingdom age. Two things he will do. Number one, he will defeat the Antichrist and all of his cohorts. All of the evil with the Antichrist will be wiped out when he comes with his glory, with all the powers and glory of heaven behind him and with him. And he will destroy the Antichrist. And the second thing, he will establish his kingdom and reign in prosperity and peace for 1,000 years known as the millennium, the thousand-year period. Now, Luke 1, 32, even while the angel was announcing his birth, the angel said to Mary, For the Lord God shall give him the, unto him the throne of his father David. Now, the line comes right down through David and ultimately through Jesus, the greater son of David, and he will rule and reign for a thousand years, and Jesus shall reign wherever the sun doth his successive journeys run, his kingdom stretch from shore to shore, till moon shall wax and wane no more. Behold the islands with their kings, and Europe her finest tribute brings. From north to south the princes meet to pay their homage at his feet. There's coming a day when every person, unbeliever on this Glow will acknowledge who Jesus Christ is and bow before him and confess that he's the king. And he is. And here's the good news. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Here's the good news. We shall reign with him. That's what John said in the Revelation 20 and verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such, the second death hath no power. He shall reign with God and with Christ for a thousand years. There it is, a literal king on a literal throne in a literal city on a literal earth for a literal 1,000 years. Blessed and holy. He that hath part in the first resurrection. Let's stand together, please. Maybe God has spoken to your heart and shown you some things that you needed to see or needed to hear. I hope it's been a challenge. I hope it's been a blessing. As we think about with our heads bowed now, the last days. Remember, I asked you to underscore those two words. That's where we are in 20. 22, I believe firmly with all of my heart these are the last perilous, difficult, harsh, savage, unsettled days that Paul wrote about to young Timothy. I hope you're prepared for his return. Father, we thank you today for all that you've done for us providing salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. We know he's coming, and we believe he's coming soon to rapture us, to take us away 
out of this world of sin, sorrow, shame, all of the heartaches, trials, troubles, difficulties, discouragements, disillusionments, death, sickness, and pain will all be over. And we'll be forever with our Lord. May it be so. In Jesus' name. Pastor will come and uh, close the service how the Lord leads him to do so. With every head bowed, as he comes, you be thinking about what's been said. Are you ready for his return? All right, Pastor. <laughs> opportunity, come forward, let us take the Bible, show you the Bible way of salvation. Here today, other burdens, maybe the Holy Spirit of God spoke into your heart today, and you just need the old-fashioned altar. Watch you come, watch you come, while Stacy begins to sing. seated for just a moment. <clears throat> just a few short weeks ago, Michael and Priscilla Olson walked into our doors for the very first time. And they have continued to come and they have been a blessing to this church already. They have a servant's heart. Um, Michael has spent a, he and James and Blake have spent a couple of evenings down here laying a new floor in the nursery. And and again, I, it's just their servant's heart. They, they want to come and they want to be busy. And um, I spoke to them. I spoke to Michael, I guess it was, um, on a Wednesday night. Priscilla was home with the baby, and, and, uh, but Michael was here. And, and I was talking to them about the church and uh, about their desires. And he said, oh, we want to be a part of this church. And I said, Michael, we want you to be a part of this church. And I talked to both of them last Sunday regarding their salvation. Both of them have a, 
a Bible uh, definition, a Bible way of salvation, um, but they've never been baptized. So they want to come into the family gospel light Baptist church through baptism. Um, they understand the importance of that and, and the membership portion of that. And so after the service today, we'll speak to them and, and get a time scheduled for that to take place. But, um, but I'm going to ask them to come and, and stand in front here, Michael and Priscilla, and, and if y'all would come and maybe stand here in front um, with, with the baby. And, and um, we're going to ask the people to come by and just give you a right hand of fellowship in just a moment. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. And um, well, that's okay. I feel that way on Sundays myself sometimes. <laughs> They says, they says, we got to go. And I'll start sounding just like that. <laughs> but I don't want to go. You're the pastor. You've got to go. And, and I'll sound like that all the way to church. No, that's not true. But we, but um, I promised them whenever they came in, and I said, that baby will not disturb us. If you choose to have the baby in the auditorium, then you bring the baby in the auditorium, and I promise he won't disturb us here in the service, and I'm so grateful for parents who want to who want to raise their children in church. So we're going to stand to our feet. I'm going to ask you to come by, greet them, let them know how how happy you are. We don't, we don't need to take a vote to vote them into the church because they're going to come through baptism. All right. And so, with that being said, let's bow our heads and Brother Tony and Miss Melissa and the kids. Thank you for coming and being part of the service this afternoon. Next time y'all come, um, let's hear. The, Aubrey with the ukulele, ukulele, and and Caleb sing. Okay, it's been it's been a little while since we've heard them, and y'all please do that. <laughs> to be allergic to peanut butter, how sad. I, I mean, I, I mean, it could I don't know if there's could be get much worse than that. I'm, I'm sorry. The bottom of my heart, I'll have some peanut butter, peanut butter today for you. You know, you know, maybe on, on our behalf, Brother Tony, you and I will eat enough peanut butter to get her to heaven. I mean, isn't that in the Bible somewhere? <laughs> All right, enough foolishness. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And again, thank you for being here and for you and your family and Brother, brother Dr. Barber, Miss Barber, and, and David. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think this about year 10, maybe year 11 that you've been with us and thank you and we we have you on the calendar for next year uh, first sunday of april and uh, if if the lord tarries if the lord tarries but maybe we'll have that meeting in heaven <laughs> if he if he decides to return blaine if you could dismiss us in prayer please and then come by and greet michael and melissa uh, priscilla if you would please